What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're back with another My Damn Thoughts episode for you guys covering AEW and Match Series number four. Now, we did dive into this full wave and we broke down the entire thing. We covered every single figure from CM Punk all the way down to Chris Jericho. Very nice set. I have really enjoyed reviewing this set, as you guys could tell by the reviews. I hope you noticed it. Don't like that. That's better. That's a better spot. But I really enjoyed myself reviewing this. We got our first ever AEW CM Punk. We got some great street gears. We got some first time in the line. We got a lot of great stuff going on in this set, and I, I thought it was overall a fantastic set. If you guys do not know what My Damn Thoughts is, you should know by now, but if you don't, it's basically where we run through the details of the set. I give you the best, the worst. We rank the full set from best to worst. I give you my honest thoughts on everything about it in between, and it kind of gives you extra details about the set if you guys missed the individual reviews, which you should still go back and watch if you guys missed it. Here on the channel, we don't leave any details out, man. We dive into every single figure from WWE and AEW. If it's elite, ultimate, supreme, or unrivaled. We're not dealing with basic shit over here. Let's dive into my damn thoughts on AEW and Match Series number four. Starting out first, I like to cover my first thoughts on the set. When the set was first shown to us, I think it was at Revolution Fan Fest, if I'm not mistaken. We saw this full wave in its entirety. And my first thoughts were I'm super hyped. I, I was super hyped for it for from the beginning. You know, I, I like Jade a lot. You know, we're getting Jade. I love the suited bodies. I love the street gear for Paige. I love that we're getting our first ever CM Punk. Seeing that that one there, even though it does look like Nico Bellich. Ever since I saw it, like, nobody said it looked like Nico Bellich until after I posted that in my review. Now I see that all over social media, but regardless of the fact, I was super hyped for my first thoughts. My first thoughts on the wave were, let's get this damn wave. Now let's move into what figure I think will be the shelf warmer in the set. Now, as you guys know, primarily a lot of women's figures are the shelf warmers in the set, but for this one, Brad, I think it's gotta be Corazon de Leon Chris Jericho right here. I just do not see good things for this figure in the future. I, I honestly am kind of worried about it. First of all, we've had a ton of Chris Jericho's, okay? If it was a regular Chris Jericho, maybe it wouldn't shelf warm. You know, he, he can move units. People are constantly in demand for a Chris Jericho. First of all, this day, if even if it was a young, really good-looking head sculpt, maybe that would help it out on the pegs. If it had a really great cloth jacket, neither's the case. It's a bad head sculpt. It's a weird character. It's got a rubber jacket. Nothing really going for this figure right here, man. So, very odd figure. Very unique. I am happy with the uniqueness of it, but I think he is in for a reckoning on the shelf warmer. Once this set hits full retail, this will be shelf warmer of the year. I'm predicting. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but that's just my projection. Chris Jericho Corazon de Leon will be the shelf warmer in the set. Next up, we are going to cover the hottest figure in the set. Now, I think this one kind of writes itself. It's going to be CM Punkathy. You know, this right here is going to move and sell like hotcakes. I hope that it, like Brody Lee, I think it'll be more sought after than Brody Lee. As crazy as that sounds, I think that people are going to want to get their hands on the this figure. It's his first, you know, AEW figure. I know Brody Lee was too. I just think that this figure is going to have, because it's his first figure in eight years, it's going to be a really big deal. This one and the Walmart exclusive, I think, are going to be really sought after. Unless they get over mass produced like the rest of the regular AEW figures, I don't see this one being at retail a whole lot. Like, if you see this at retail, I would grab it, man. I mean, that's just the case there. This figure is going to be selling like hotcakes and sausage. You're going to want to get your hands on it. It's going to be one of those that say, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in camp where whenever I see it, I'm grabbing it just for fix-ups and, and, you know, potential things in the future. So I will be grabbing a lot of the Punk, but the Punk is freaking good, man. It's a nice unit. It's a solid first impression for CM Punk in the AEW and Rival line, but he is definitely the hottest figure in the set. Now, as far as chase figures go, these are our two chases. You have the Cody. You have your Cody in suit as the chase, which is very odd. We did not see that one coming. And then you have the CM Punk, which is in trunks for the chase, which is going to be highly sought after, I think. Once they're starting to get found, I, I, th I imagine that the, the price for that chase is is going to be pretty insanity. So just kind of play the long game on that one. Wait it out a little bit. I think you're going to be able to get it at a better price. And for Cody, I definitely want one of those to lose. I think it's a beautiful thing and the cream or gray colored suit looks really sick. But both of these guys are the chase figures. And I, I like both of them. I think that the Cody's a bit odd on the chase. You know, I think it's a bit of an odd choice. But at the same time, I still, I, I kind of like it. You know, it's a little bit plain Jane, but those are our chases for Unmatched Series number four. Our next category is going to be the best head sculpt category. Now, we have a couple options. All right, and I, I do have to give an asterisk. It's down to these two. Now, you're going to say, well, what about Cody? His head sculpts are fantastic. And yes, you are correct, but these are brand new head sculpts, and I want to give credit where credit is due on the new head sculpts. The Cody ones we've seen a bunch of times, they are really, really good. They're very strong, and they're probably the best. Maybe. I don't know. But this Jade figure right here is a very, very good head sculpt, and this Hangman is a very, very good head sculpt. Both of these figures look incredible. Oh, my God. My goodness.
goodness. And I could not give it to just one figure. It's honestly a coin flip. I think both of them look really good. I think if, like, gun to my head I had to pick, I think Hangman slightly edges out Jade. But they're both really strong head sculpts. They're both really good. I enjoy both of these figures a lot. So, I just think, I just love them. I, I really do love those figures. Next up, we do have the best articulation. That is going to Cody. And you're probably like, how in the hell is a suited figure going to win this right here? He just moves the best, man. He, he I mean, with all these bells and whistles and all, everything that he can do and bend over and all the likeness and the shifty wifties, man. I mean, this guy, this guy's got it all. I love the lower shin cut right there. I love the way the figure feels in hand. It's the best. It, it is the best articulation in the set. I love this Cody figure. I think it's fantastic. I truly think it moves around the best. I really do. I think that CM Punk moves around pretty solid. His arms are a bit stiff. MJF moves around pretty solid. Hangman moves around pretty solid. Even Jericho over there moves pretty solid. But you know who doesn't move around pretty solid? That's going to be Jade. And Jade is actually the worst articulation in the set. Her figure looks incredible, but her legs are very stiff, man. Her forward kick goes out to the side. As you guys can see, it's just a very odd deal right there. She can split C. She can't kick back at all. Upper thigh cut's fine. Double jointed knee is fine. And like, it's not horrible, but I still think we want to get that deep ab crunch in there. I still think I'm still of the camp where they need to get rid of this like belly button, like C-section cut right above the belly button. I know that a C-section is usually below the belly button. I'm just saying that C-section looking cut right there does not need to be there, bro. It does not need to be there. It really aesthetically puts the figure off, especially because it's right in the middle of the abdomen. If this was a black like t-shirt torso, you wouldn't really notice it, but since it's not, they really need to fix that. But I really enjoy this Jade figure. She's just really stiff, man. She like gotta gotta fix her up a little bit there, but Jade's figure is really nice, but she cannot move around. Now the best accessory in this set, we got a lot of simple accessories in this set, but I think it's pretty obvious. It's gonna be the Larry hoodie, okay? I actually did some research on the Charlie hoodie. You guys discuss if you guys missed the punk review, I am gonna get a hoodie that looks just like this, but it's gonna be of my dog. This inspired me to get one. But they were gonna be like $95 or something like that. And I was like, nah, bro, I need to I need to do some digging and stuff like that. So I'm still investigating it, but I am going to order the hoodie, and I will show it off once I get it. But uh, this this hoodie is very nice. It's got the mock pockets. The hood's very good. It fits the figure well. It's a, it's a very nice cloth hoodie, and you guys know we're getting the AEW hoodie with the Walmart exclusive punk, which we do plan on reviewing once it hits retail. I imagine that that figure should be hitting retail before August, if I had to guess, but we will see about that. But this is easily the best accessory in the, in the whole deal. Comparing this set to Unmatched Series 3 and Unmatched Series 2 and Unmatched Series number 1, I think this might be the best collective set as a whole when you look at full Unmatched series. I think that all the sets have been good so far. I've really enjoyed all the sets with a different variety of characters that we're getting, but I think this is the best set of all. I mean, you're dealing with a beautiful looking MJF gear, the street gear of Paige and Cody, perfect for other customs. CM Punk's first figure, great head sculpts throughout except for MJF and Chris Jericho. Jesus Christ. The worst head sculpt is probably Jericho, but MJF is definitely up there. Good God. But on Unmatched Series 3 with our Dark Order was a solid set. Unmatched Series 2 with, you know, Wardlow's first figure. And Santana and Ortiz, you had to take Conti in there. That was a solid set. And then Unmatched Series 1 with the Kenny and Darby were unbelievable as well. But I think this set is better than all of those collectively. Like, as a whole group ranking the whole set, I think this set does beat them out by a sliver. And out of 10, I gave this full set an 8.5. I get it an 8.5 out of 10. The reason being, Chris Jericho really brings down the set. MJF's head sculpt really brings down the set. Jade's articulation brings down the set and the CM Punk could have been a lot better. It could have been a lot better and the head sculpt's not perfect just yet. It's not terrible. It's not bad but I think it could have been better so as a set I think 8.5 is perfect right there. I think that's a good one. You could give it a 9 but I felt like some of those things were a, kind of a bigger deal. Like the Chris Jericho fully is kind of a kind of a big oops. CM Punk could be drastically better. I didn't like his formula uh, you know on the kick pads and stuff like that so for now he gets an 8.5. Now getting into the number of figures for each person in this set now I'm going to start for Chris Jericho, and I'm not even going to count all his figures. You know what? I, you guys know the deal on Chris Jericho. I, You know what? I'm not counting. It's Corazon de Leon. It's not Chris Jericho, all right? So I'm not even counting it. There's a lot of Chris Jerichos out there. You get over it. Next up, we have Jade. This is her first time in the line. This is her first time in the line. It's a damn good figure. I love this figure. This is my favorite women's figure so far, I think. It, it stands really well. I like it. I post it around. Even though it has hard articulation, I really enjoy it. And uh, you could see her in a future MDT women's division if we can get there. For MJF, you do have the Unrivaled Series 2. You have the Unrivaled Series 2 Chase. You have the AEW Unmatched Series 2 figure. The Unmatched Series 2 Chase. The Unrivaled Series 6. And then you have this figure. I think that's all of MJF's. Pretty good selection amount of MJF's. For Hangman, you have the Series 2 Unrivaled 
figure. You have the Unrivaled 5. You have the Unrivaled 5 Chase. And then you have that UK Ring figure, which I think is just a straight up re-release of the Unrivaled 5. And then you also have the 2-pack with Kenny, which I think is also a re, uh, you know, a re-release of the Unrivaled 5. So, not a lot of stuff going on there, but you know, he has a decent amount of figures. And then also you have CM Punk, who's first time on the line. We know this, but he also has that Walmart exclusive that is coming soon. And he, he is the Chase in the set. So you have those two figures coming. And I was told by a reliable source that uh, this is not the end of the punks. You know what I'm saying? And last but not least, we do have Cody, who uh, you know, you have the ringside exclusive TNT champion Cody. You got the Supreme Edition that's coming. You have the Unrivaled 1A, the Unrivaled 1B, the Unrivaled 1A Chase. You have the Unrivaled 4, the Unrivaled 4 Chase. You have the UK ring, you know, basic Cody, or not basic Cody, but basic ring Cody is what I like to call it. And then you have the Blood and Guts 2-pack with Dustin. So that covers all the figures. But now, I'm gonna take them off screen, and we're gonna rank this set from worst to best. Now, Listen to me right now. Fix the camera, you dumb idiot. All right, putting these figures on screen. Just because a figure comes in at the bottom of the ranking doesn't mean it doesn't have any good qualities about it and there's nothing good about it. And just because a figure comes in at number one doesn't mean it's not without its faults or that it could not be better in some way. And... Uh, some figure had to come in at number six, and some figure had to come in at number one, and that's just the bottom line. All right, starting out at the bottom of the ranking, coming in at number six, I mean, Brad, uh, good, good God in heaven, it's Chris Jericho, okay? It's Corazon de Leon, all right? Not even close, it's Corazon de Leon. I don't give a damn, it's Corazon de Leon. It's not even close. Head sculpt is very lackluster. It's a figure that nobody asked for. It's this little tassel stuff that's going on right here. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is in the top five worst AEW figures released so far. I love the idea of it. I just think the execution was wasn't there, and I think it's going to shelf warm pretty badly. Not to say that it can't move around good. It can move around good. I'm a huge Chris Jericho guy. He's one of my favorites of all time. He's one of my. He was one of my first favorite wrestlers. So you know, it's nothing like that. I just think it could have been a lot better. Oh God, dang it! Next up, number five. We have MJF. MJF's head sculpt is very lackluster. I think if this was the first MJF that we got, it would may have done better, and I think he's just kind of a result of his peers. You know what I'm saying? Had this set been lackluster, maybe he'd be higher because I love the gear. I love the, you know, I love the elbow pad. I love everything about it. The head sculpt is kind of what, the gear and the head sculpt is what makes an MJF figure kind of like a Randy Orton, right? It's all about the head sculpt because it's kind of plain Jane, not a lot going on with it. It's going to come down to the head sculpt, and it's going to come down to the gear. The gear is fantastic. The head sculpt is the the exact opposite. So for that reason, he's coming in at the number five spot. Number four. This is bothering the shish out of me, but it's falling down and it makes me sick. God. Number four is going to be Jade. Now, I love Jade. I love this figure. I think the head sculpt's great. I do not like the articulation. I think that her arms could have been bigger or more muscular. I think the stomach and torso and head sculpt, you like all the midsection looks really good. I do not like the waist cut right there in the middle of the belly button. But I think, again, she's kind of a result of her peers, you know, it's it's very hard to rank her any higher because this set is so good, and I think that's kind of where we are with her. So she's going to come in at number four. Even though it makes me sick, I really like the figure. She's coming in at number four for me. Coming in at number three, we're going with Hangman. I love this figure. I love how unique it is. I think the head sculpt's great. I love the idea of it. I love the accessories. I think that overall, it moves around fantastic. I love the sculpts. I think the paint apps are a bit dull as far as the pants go, but at the same time, this figure's really fun man. I, I, I enjoy this figure a whole lot, and I, I really do enjoy it. It honestly has an argument for a top two spot, but for now, he is at number three. And coming down to two and one, it's going to be between CM Punk and Cody. And in my ranking, Brad, CM Punk is number two, and Cody is number one. And that's not a joke. That is not me trolling. That is me being 100% honest with you. CM Punk is not perfect, okay? I do not like his, his formula here. I don't like the way that there's no knee pads. I know that they were under the pads, whatever. Even if you had to throw knee pads on it with this, it would have made the aesthetic look a lot better. I hate how there's no, I hate how the articulation is cut in the middle of the kick pad and there's no kick pad mold. It's literally just flatness right here. They sculpted it on the foot, which I like, but there needs to be some sort of added sculpt to the kick pad right here and have this as a separate piece cut off right here so that the kick pad articulates on its own, not as in the middle of it like that. Cause with the pattern, it interrupts the pattern. It looks awkward. His arms are very stiff. The head sculpt could have been a whole lot better. But I think this is solid working ground for the next CM Punk. And I think there's 
It's going to be a lot better punks. I can't wait for it. But at this juncture, he's number two. And this Cody figure is pretty much perfect head to toe. I almost didn't put him at number one because his jacket is the winter coat jacket, but it is accurate. So therefore, he did not come in at number, you know, he, therefore he did get the number one spot. It's still, you know, the head sculpts are great. I love the attention to detail with the tattoo right there. I think it's a fantastic suited body. He moves around really well. The idea for future customs and stuff is really cool. I love how good the articulation is in a suited body. You want to be able to move these guys around and stuff, and it just really captures it, man. And his his jacket arms kind of hide the, you know, the pegs pretty well compared to other figures, too. So that's an added bonus. But that is my full ranking of AEW and Match Series 4. I had a ton of foam with this reviews. But I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Let's get into a random shout-out before we call it a day. And this shout-out's going to go to Canadian Violence Wrestling. And I wanted to address this because I had 17 likes, and I, I guess people agree with this, but I did not agree with this. I did not understand this. It says, why does MJF's head look like Will Ospreay? Just put this head onto a Kenny Omega body, you get Will Ospreay. Just add decals. And I just don't see that. I, I just do not see that. I think that maybe you could use it as a base Will Ospreay as far as like the head sculpt and then you, you know, shave down the hair and add your own curly haired haircut or like wavy haircut or, or something of that nature. But I am just not seeing Will Ospreay in this. I did a side by side of him and I just did not see it. I don't know what that is right there. You guys can let me know down in the comment section below if you guys agree with that. I did not agree with that. But I did want to find out if you guys agree with it. Maybe I'm just blind. I don't know. But you guys can let me know down in the comment section below. But huge shout out to Canadian Violence Wrestling. I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. Have a blessed day. And as you guys know, don't do it, Brad. You crossed the line.